Hey everyone, good morning. It's so great to see all of you here today on the first Sunday of Advent. Um, Y'all please rise, let's begin worship, and let's sing together. a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saint, let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride Grant, thank you, band. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come, like a bride waiting for her groom. Let's be a church that's ready for him. That's part of why we come to church, isn't it? To, to give glory to God, to reorient our lives on him, to, to set our hearts and minds on him, and to be ready for his return because he is coming back. He is coming back, and he wants us to be ready, and he wants us to be his representatives while we wait so that the world can know that God is good and that God is here for us, and he he wants us all as his children to turn to him. Amen? Amen. Well, welcome. It's great to be here with you to worship today. I hope and pray that this service is is powerful and special to you. I pray that uh, we can still our hearts and our souls long enough to, to hear what God has to say to us today. 
and that his name would be glorified and that we would be inspired with his Holy Spirit to go from this place and live and serve as his people. Please take a look at uh, the announcements in the bulletin. And before I move uh, forward into that, uh, if you haven't taken the time yet, please register your attendance in the registration pads located uh, in each aisle. Also, uh, you can register, register your attendance on the Realm app if you are, are signed in on your mobile device. If you're, if you're new with us and would like to connect a little more in the life of the church and feel comfortable giving us your contact information, we would love to receive it and follow up with you and uh, help you become more connected within the life of our church family. Um, want to uh, extend congratulations to Catherine uh, Naismith and Zachary Ernest on their wedding yesterday. Catherine is uh, Grant's younger sister, and Anne, where's Anne and Randall? Uh, their daughter, and they are a proud family. Uh, had a beautiful wedding this weekend. And I think mom and dad are both watching online. They are surviving yeah, from... <laughs> Yes, a big weekend, but very, very special weekend for their family. Um, please make note of our church council meeting, very important church council meeting, coming up Monday evening, December the 11th at 6 p.m. We're going to meet in the chapel, and um, we encourage all of our church leadership to come, and anyone in the congregation is, is welcome to attend that meeting. Today, right after church, we're going to be having pizza with the pastors. For anybody that is interested in finding out more information about the life of this church or our possible membership within the church, uh, we're, even if you weren't planning on coming, we invite you to stay. We'll be in the, the next building over in the uh, the parlor uh, right behind our sanctuary. So please join us there. We'll meet for a, maybe a little over an hour. We'll have some pizza and some good conversation uh, about the life of our church. We would love for everybody to attend that would like to. Uh, we're hitting the home stretch on our Bible reading challenge for the year. We're in the book of Revelation, chapters 3 through 7. We're reading one chapter of the New Testament each weekday, Monday through Friday. And if you're a little behind, that's okay. I've had to play catch up some uh, here and there this year, but it's been a wonderful experience for me, and I hope it has for you. And even if you're way behind, just, just keep, keep going. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't get frustrated at yourself. Just pick up where you were and, and, and keep on going and see how God speaks to you when you make room for him uh, in your life. Um, so uh, through our discernment process as a congregation, trying to discern our, our future affiliation within the United Methodist de denomination, we have finally received a confirmation of a church vote date and time. And that our, our church vote to determine whether we stay in the United Methodist denomination or, or leave the denomination will be on January the 21st at 3.30 p.m., in the sanctuary. Uh, make a note of that. We'll uh, cer uh, certainly uh, post that on all our usual channels of communication. But January the 21st, 3.30 p.m. in the sanctuary, our superintendent, Reverend Steve Brown, will preside over that meeting. Very important meeting in the, the life and future of our church. Um, we are in ministry to families in need through Shepherd's Child, a wonderful ministry uh, that provides financial assistance, meal, Christmas gifts, and the sharing of the Christmas story. Our youth are going to be shopping for the Christmas gifts for the children this afternoon, and they're going to be having their celebration party next Sunday afternoon. So be in prayer for uh, those families and our youth as they make those connections. Also, we're welcoming donations of non-perishable food items for this ministry. So um, there's some collection bins in the, the sanctuary building. You're welcome to, to bring those by. And please read through the other details of that um, announcement. Our, our Congregational Care Committee has set up uh, two angel trees, one in, in here in the back of the room and one in the back of the sanctuary. These are for our homebound members, members who, who are not able to get out and come to, to worship like they would like to or like they used to. And, and it's, it's time for us to reach out and, and nurture them. So please pick up one of those angel, angels and follow the instructions printed there in the bulletin. One of our circles is selling poinsettias. Another one is selling pecans or pecans, however you say that. And another is, has helped us light the beautiful oak tree out in front of the sanctuary. Have you driven by recently at night and seen that? If you haven't, make a point to do so because it looks so good. Uh, it was uh, shining brightly uh, as the wedding was wrapping up yesterday, and I uh, was so proud to see that. And uh, they're, uh, all three of those circles are raising money through those causes for missions and ministry. Uh, please read through the youth schedule printed in, in the bulletin there. Also, our, our children have invited the rest of our church family to an intergenerational Advent wreath decorating party today um, uh, after worship. 
I believe, is that here in, in, in this room? Um, after uh, worship today, if you want to stay and, and decorate an Advent wreath with your church family, you're welcome to do so. And December the 17th, mark this down, we're going to go Christmas caroling to uh, some assisted living facilities. And that's, that's for all ages in the life of our church. We'd love for there to be a big crowd. And that's a great way to bond and connect with one another. So I hope you'll, you'll take part in that. Uh, also, we're, we're, we're gathering some feedback about some small groups that we would like to launch early next year. I uh, really think that, that small group studies and, and Bible studies are a way that, that we connect and grow in ways that we just can't otherwise. And we want to make that a strong part of our ministry. And so if you'd like to fill out that survey about some interest that you may have in small groups, and we will do our best to... Uh, meet those needs in those ways. Uh, please read through the announcements on the, the back cover of the bulletin. One uh, announcement we need to correct on Monday, the grief support group, it will not be meeting at 5 p.m. instead at 3 p.m. So uh, make that note. With all of those announcements shared, um, let us briefly stand and welcome one another as we pass the peace and love of Christ. All right, we're in the process of bringing some chairs out, so just let one of our ushers know if, if you need a chair. And um, I hope it's warming up in here a little bit too. It was a little chilly when we got here, but um, y'all, let's let's remain standing and continue worship.
Please be seated. All right, at this time, the Britton family, um, Case and Yvonne, Case and Yvonne and AK and Walker are going to come and light our Advent wreath. You know what to do, Case. Check one, two. <laughs> You've held a microphone before. Check one, two. Ha ha. Good morning. I know it's murky outside, and I'm so happy that we get to do the first one because the sun is coming. He's coming. So, in the days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Isaiah 40. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. For long, we real, for long, no, we long for real peace, true peace, and just peace. Congregation. We light these candles as a sign of God's just peace. May they be the beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all the people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Britain family. At this time, we dismiss our children and young ones to Little Church for those that are going with Pastor Donna and her crew. And we also have the opportunity to continue in our worship as we honor God with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. If the ushers would come forward, please.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father God, as we pass the offering plate around with one another, help us to remember, Father, that you are a generous God and you call us to be like you. And as you have first given to us, you invite us to give back to you. You invite us to give our first fruits and the best of what we have, that your name would be glorified and that the goodness of your purposes could be carried out in this world through your church and through other good means. Father, help us to take stock of so many of the blessings, Father, and the abundance that so many of us have. Father, may we be eager to give back to you. May we be eager to strive to glorify you and to turn to you. And to help perpetuate your good in this world. And Father, you could do it without us. You could do it better than we can do it. But for some reason, you invite us into your goodness and into your purposes in this world. And as we step out in faith and as we step out in faithfulness to you and for the sake of what you've commanded us to do, when we step in your direction, Father, we experience a blessing. We experience the blessing of being close with you and of of partnering with you and, and showing love for you by our obedience and by our desire to do your will. And so, Father, may your light shine brightly from us. As we live out our conviction of your truth, of your righteousness, of your power and and your majesty, all mixed with your grace and love. Father, we need you. Many, many people in this world don't know who you are and you've invited us to bear witness to your goodness and love and salvation to them so may we hold on to our mission of following Jesus and sharing him with others Father may we strive to be the individual Christians and the church family that you've assembled us to be may we put you first before anything else And may that become evident to others as we seek to live for you. And Father, you know our needs. You know our shortcomings. You know where we and others need healing. You know the places of brokenness in our lives and all over the world. But Father, we pause for a few moments because you have invited us to share our concerns and our joys with you. So Father, please hear our prayers. Thank you, Father, for making yourself available to us. And thank you for for responding to each of our prayers in your perfect will and in your perfect timing. And we humbly lift up all of these prayers in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, today, the, the, the first Sunday of Advent, we begin a, a new series based on a, a, a really good book that I've enjoyed over the years, written by a Methodist minister named Matt Rawl, called The Redemption of Scrooge. The Redemption of Scrooge, you can guess that it was based on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Uh, Matt Rawl does a, a great job of, of pulling out some, some wonderful, powerful truths out of uh, the message of that book. Uh, and he writes um, uh, that, that A Christmas Carol is a powerful story that reminds us that there is no soul too gruff, too cold, or too cantankerous for God's redeeming love. I say praise be to God. Amen. Amen. As most of us know, the, the Christmas, uh, A Christmas Carol is the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, a, a tight-fisted, squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner who was famous for saying, Bah! Humbug. Say it with some more gusto. Bah! Humbug. humbug. Yeah. So that, that saying, Bah! Humbug, perfectly expresses Scrooge's worldview. You know, the, the, the one thing Scrooge truly cared about in the world was himself and keeping the money that he had and making more money. Um, and Christmas was his least favorite time of year. He thought that Christmas was a waste. He would do things like chase off Christmas carolers from his doorstep. He would begrudgingly give his employee, Bob Cratchit, time off, even on Christmas Day. Um, and he rudely turned down his, his nephew's invitations for uh, Christmas dinner year after year. And some of us use Scrooge's name today when we say uh, things like, don't be such a Scrooge, you know, when somebody's grumpy or ill or, or bitter or less than enthused about the Christmas season. And to refresh our memories a little bit, the, the story of the Christmas carol takes uh, place on a cold Christmas Eve in London. Uh, and uh, Scrooge arrives home uh, that evening from work, a long day at work, and he sees in his door knocker something that really shocks and surprises him. He sees the face of his deceased former co-worker, Jacob Marley. It's a, it's a ghastly image he sees for just a few moments. It startles him, and, and he blinks, and, and then it's gone. And he enters his house, and he goes about his evening business, and Later that evening, uh, he hears something like the sound of, of someone dragging heavy chains. And he's, he's afraid, and he, he waits for whatever it is to, to come out. And he, he finally realizes that this is Jacob Marley's ghost, his former co-worker. He's coming toward him, but he's bound in all these heavy chains and cash boxes and keys and padlocks and ledgers and deeds and heavy money purses. And it's obvious that this is Jacob Marley's punishment for a lifetime of greed and selfishness and lack of compassion. Marley tells Scrooge that he has one chance to avoid the same fate and that he will be visited by three other spirits and he must listen to them or that he will be accursed to carry much heavier chains of his own when his time comes. And as we know, uh, the other three spirits that visit, visit Scrooge in, in the story are the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas yet to come, our, our Christmas future. And fortunately, through these visits, Scrooge listens, and over the course of the story, Scrooge goes through this powerful inner transformation. His life, and more importantly, his soul become redeemed. Uh, Scrooge's heart changes from resentment and anger and isolation and judgmentalism to generosity, compassion, love, and joy. And by the end of the story, Scrooge is described as a man who learned to keep Christmas well. Amen. That's going to be the title of our Christmas Eve message keeping Christmas well. And over the next three Sundays, we're going to uh, go over uh, various aspects of this wonderful story together. You know, um, 
Maybe you wrestle with things like, uh, like Scrooge wrestled with, or, or, or maybe you don't. Maybe you wrestle with some other things. But over the course of, of, of this series, I want us to think about what in our life needs to be transformed, what in our life needs to be redeemed, that we would not be held back by the, the chains of our own sinfulness, that we'd be freed to serve God and fulfill God's purposes in our lives. Some very important things to think about. So what can we learn today from Scrooge? Mostly we learn from him what, how not to be. Uh, Scrooge liked his money too much. Sometimes I find myself feeling the same way. Um, his thoughts about money, the problem was not that he had money or that he wanted to save money or make money. The, the problem was that most of his thoughts on money revolved around himself. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with having or making money. It's what we choose to do with it that makes it good or bad. And so we have a, an opportunity to, to use what we have in a redeemed and transformed way for God's purposes, or we can use it for our own purposes and end up being chained and weighed down by it. So um, the problem with Scrooge is that he measured the quality of life with wealth and prosperity. He wouldn't even, you know, burn a fire in his office because he wanted to, to, to save money. He was so stingy. And his mantra was, you reap what you sow. You reap what you... That's from the scriptures. You reap what you sow. It's a true statement. And Scrooge had, had done well financially by sowing seeds of hard work and, and saving and not spending but Scrooge wasn't sowing all the right seeds in, in the right ways. Scrooge looked down on those who were poor. He judged them. He thought that they were just lazy or unresourceful. He didn't give money to those in need. and He, he didn't have a compassionate spirit. And, and this attitude left Scrooge bitter and lonely. A miserable existence. Bitter and lonely from a lack of compassion, love, and, and generosity. You know, Dickens is writing so that we don't fall into these same traps. For Scrooge, everything was quantifiable on a ledger. You reap what you sow. And, and he was right in part. This is even a verse from Scripture, and there's truth in this verse. But this verse cannot be the foundation of our relationship with God. We would not be blessed if God allowed us to reap what we sow. Why? Because we're all broken, fallen human beings. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All are in need of justification of His grace. And He offers His grace freely to those who will receive it. We do reap what is sown, but praise God, we reap what Jesus sowed on our behalf because God allows us to receive the righteousness of Jesus as he washes us and cleanses of our sins through the blood that he shed for us on the cross so that we could be reconciled with God. Certainly, we reap what is sown, but thank God we reap what Jesus sowed on our behalf. Ephesians 1, verses 7 and 8 says, In Him, talking about Christ, in Christ we have redemption through His blood shed on the cross, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches, listen to this, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Thanks be to God that we have a Savior in Jesus. And that's why we have the season of Advent and Christmas, to acknowledge that we are in need of a Savior. We, we cannot find our way back to God without God's intervention, without God's help. And God has done so through the life, death, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus. You know, and, and, and so in, in, instead of, uh, you know, the reaping what we sow being the principle of our salvation, God's grace, instead, God's grace and his desire for us to be with him eternally because he is our father and we are his children whom he created in his image. It's his desire for us that becomes the foundation of our relationship 
with God. And so God did all the work through his son Jesus to make a way for us back to him based on his life, death, and resurrection. Jesus paid our debt on the cross. And only so, only through that, can we be reconciled with God and have eternal life. Um, and uh, that's part of why Jacob Marley, I believe, that's, part, that's the, the, the sole reason, the main reason uh, that, that, that Dickens wrote this story. And it's part of why Jacob Marley's ghost comes to visit Ebenezer Scrooge. He comes to warn Scrooge about the way that he's headed. Because he's already been down that path. And he saw what awaited for him down that path. And he didn't want for anyone else to suffer the plight that he is suffering now. And so he he goes to warn Scrooge that he's headed towards destruction and misery. uh, and, And away from hope and joy in the life that Christ can bring. And tragically, somehow, and this is, you know, this doesn't, this veers from Scripture a little bit, but somehow after his death, Marley can, his ghost can now see the suffering of, 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 of people in poverty that he ignored in his earthly life, much like the rich man that ignored the needs of, of poor Lazarus that laid at his gate, you know, asking for help. You know, but, but now Marley can see the errors of his ways. He can see the harm and the destruction that he caused because he did not have compassion. And he's now restless. He now wants to help, but he can't because he's no longer alive in the flesh. He's, he's just this ghostly spirit that's living in torment, wanting to show love, wanting to help, wanting to make a difference, and not being able to do so. It's like a hellish feeling for him. And so he goes to warn Scrooge, who's headed in the same path and maybe even a more severe uh, level. And he tells, he tells Scrooge, this is the time of year. And Marley's been dead for seven years at this point. Um, he tells Scrooge, this is the time of year that I suffer most. Why did I walk through crowds of fellow beings with my eyes turned down uh, and never uh, raise my eyes to see their suffering? And offer help. How could I have lived a whole lifetime and and not sought to help people? And he continues, very brutally honest with Scrooge. He says, Scrooge, I am wearing the chains that I forged in life. I am reaping what I sowed. I made them link by link and girded them on my own free will as I never took time to care for others. Marley didn't want Scrooge to end up suffering in chains like his. And he wants to let Scrooge know that holding on to his money will not satisfy the longings that he has deep down in his heart. Only God's salvation and only God's love, love of God and love of others, can satisfy the longings that every single one of us have deep down in our hearts. And, and God's word speaks to this so well in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6. I might have given the... the no, I, I gave the right references. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. The apostle Paul is, is writing to young Timothy, trying to raise him up and, and lead him to be a leader amongst other Christians. And he writes, But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Scrooge is headed in that direction, and and Marley's already been there, and that's why he's come back. And going on to verse 17... Paul instructs Timothy, as for those who are, uh, are rich in this present age, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches rather than on God, who richly provides us everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good. They are to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. Thus storing up for themselves a treasure 
of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. What powerful words, you know, uh, leading us to, to how to use what God has given us to, 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 to be a blessing to others and to end up storing up for ourselves a treasure in heaven that, that, that no one can take from us and to take hold of life that really is life. That's the abundant life that, that Jesus came to bring to each of us who would receive him and, and walk in his ways. And the truth of the matter is that as God's people, we end up finding a lot of joy in life when we learn to give back to others, when we learn to give towards God's purposes, and when we help people who are in need. But our human nature, which is broken and fallen and, and limited, it finds this a little counterintuitive at first. And until we learn practices of compassion and, and generosity, our human nature naturally uh, discerns that if we give some of what we have away, we will end up with less. But the truth of the matter is, when, when we give some of what we have for the sake of God and others, we don't end up with less. We end up with more. We don't necessarily end up with more money. We end up with more life. We end up with more joy, more fulfillment, more satisfaction, a much greater sense of hope and meaning and, and purpose in life. When we give what we have away, we don't end up with less. We end up with more. And I love the way Paul put it. We end up taking hold of the life that is truly life. Who doesn't want to take hold of that? <laughs> Who doesn't want to store up a precious treasure in heaven? Proverbs 19, 17 says, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord because God identifies with those who are in need. God identifies with those who are left out and, and, and marginalized. And he, he loves them. And he calls us to, to notice and, and love those on the margins. He calls us to speak his truth and his love and desire to help them in, in the ways that we can. And so a question for us as, as we are about to be able to have the privilege of coming forth to the table of the Lord, I, I want us to have some questions on our mind as we come and uh, before his table and as we, as we leave this place and, and go about our, our, our lives as God's people. Number one, are, are we going to be like Scrooge and, and Marley and forge chains of selfishness, bitterness, or judgmentalism? Or maybe you don't struggle in the same ways they did. Maybe Dickens' A Christmas Carol is calling uh, others of us to examine other areas of our lives. To, to look for what's holding us back from the good, abundant, and faithful life that God has for us as his children. Maybe for you it's not greed. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's, it's, it's resentment towards someone, perhaps a, a, a grudge that you're just not willing to let go of or from forgiveness that you just haven't been able to extend yet. God's calling you to let go of that. He's calling you to be set free from that, to take hold of life that, that truly is life. Maybe it's grief over the loss of a loved one or a broken heart from something else in life. And for some of us, those, those, those pains are, are very fresh and they're not healed yet, and that's okay. It does take some time. But maybe you've been grieving for a long, long time and maybe you've just allowed that to, to grip you, to overcome you, and, and hold you back from abundance and joy and peace and, and, and grace uh, that God wants us all to live with. Maybe it's time to, to turn towards God and allow Him to, to heal some of those, those broken parts 
of your life. Maybe it's time to talk to somebody and to, to be honest about how you're feeling. Uh, that in sharing and opening ourselves up, healing and, and, and God's goodness in life can come in. Maybe, maybe you've been too focused on your own personal ambition. Goals you've set for yourself and your career or in, um, in other areas of life. Maybe you've been so focused on those things that you haven't paid enough attention to God. Uh, maybe it's time to re-examine your priorities before you end up being a person or, 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 or living in a, a life that you never really wanted to live. You know, maybe, maybe you're into some bad habits that, that, that don't seem so, so harmful now, but will eventually lead uh, to some unhealth in your life or, or, you know, that could be harmful to others or your relationship with God. You know, maybe you're in some unhealthy friendships with bad influences and, and God's calling you to, to turn back towards Him. How can we turn towards God and to other Christians in these area of, areas of our lives for restoration and renewal and, and learn, as Scrooge did, that there's a better way, a much better way, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we certainly are privileged to be able to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us remember that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. You don't have to be a member of, of this church to come to this table. We believe that this is an open table because it's Jesus' table and all who desire to be saved from their sins and trust Jesus as their Savior and Lord are welcome to his table. So let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice 
in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Father God, we humbly pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, please make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So friends, the bread which we break is a sharing, the body of Christ, broken for you and me for the forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God. And the cup over which we give thanks, it is a sharing in the blood of Christ, shed for our redemption because of God's great love. Thanks be to God. Will those who will be assisting with serving communion come forward, please? Friends, we're going to invite our our musicians and singers to come forward first. Um, We do have little receptacles at at either side uh, for your communion cups when you're finished. And now come to the Lord's table.
Jesus Christ What then can I give him Let us pray. Father, how fortunate we are to be your guests, your dinner guests at, at your table of grace. Your word invites us to boldly approach your throne. To boldly approach our throne, not, not after we've cleaned our lives up, but to boldly come to you, kneeling at your feet, laying our burden of our sin and our grief and all of our troubles at your feet. For you can help us with them, and you can take away all of our sin. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you've done for us on the cross. And God, we, we ask for the strength to, to live and, 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 and live our lives as, as your children and, and your representatives here on earth. That through the way we live and relate to you, that others can see glimpses of you and want a relationship with you for themselves. Help us to live in that way. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you all to go in peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.